Good morning, everyone. It's the 3rd of July, and Mark has been reading through this Phillips versus the State of Missouri. This morning, he's going to be reading chapters 15 and 16. Chapter 15 is when I announced the victory, and then the chapter 16 was really my wife's observation and thoughts regarding the case. Kind of gives you a different perspective coming from my wife having to go through all of this with me. So anyway, I'm going to turn this over to Mark. If you have an interest in getting a copy of this book, I'll be happy to send you a PDF copy if you go to LarryWPhillips.com and go to my contact section and just say I'd like a copy of your book. I'll be happy to send you a copy in your email. Phil's Verses the State of Missouri, Chapter 15 through 16. Chapter 15, the Announcement and the Victory. O oh, clap your hands, all you people, shout unto God the voice of triumph. Psalm 47 1. I'd announce the victory each time that I thought we had won. When the real victory came, I was almost jaded. I really wondered if this was real. Sure, the people with whom I had shared the victories along the way might have felt the same way. I was hesitant to share the good news. Often we as Christians are also hesitant to share the good news that Jesus came to save his people from their sins. Why do we hold back? I think that sometimes Satan will whisper in our ears active accusatory things that cause us to draw back and not stand strong for the truth of God's word. I'd been on many radio stations. My story had been on the 700 Club. The case had been described in detail in the Washington Times. When the final victory came, I felt like a beach ball without any air in it. I was exhausted. It took some time before I began to come out of my shell again and proclaim publicly the victory that Almighty God had given us. I'm still at this juncture in my life. I need everyone's prayers that God would use this victory to glorify himself. The scripture comes to my mind, but not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus, as we receive the good news, we got a call from a Christian co worker who still works in the state of Missouri, foster children. He gave me some good news and some bad news. The good news was that he had been in a recent training and there was an outside trainer promoting licensing homosexuals as foster parents. He stated the person in charge of the Kansas City area immediately stopped the trainer and stated the state of Missouri no longer licensed homosexuals. His foster parents was the best victory of all. The bad news was that the homosexual supervisor's significant other had died of AIDS, leaving the homosexual supervisor with thousand dollars in medical bills. Shortly after homosexual Rise himself to die of AIDS as well. My heart was sad. And this Christian told me that this person never showed any change of heart concerning his lifestyle. I must state that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I've gone far, far from God. But God changed my heart and drew me to Himself. Oh, how we must reach out and love to those who are in need of the Savior. This serves to remind me of how in this life is of how we should be about our father's business. Chapter 16, my wife's observation of the thoughts regarding the case. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, Proverbs 12.4. Hi, Larry asked me if I would consider sharing my observation and thoughts regarding our life, the case, and our special relationship with God. My name is Rosette, and Larry and I have been married for over four years. The longer I live, the more I understand why I went through certain experiences that have prepared me for what I'm going through now. I'm the eldest of 11 children. We went to church 
regularly. I can remember a school teacher asking me if I wanted to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior when I was only four years old. I knelt down and asked Jesus into my life. Afterwards, my teacher told my parents what had happened. We continued to go to church. I remember that we didn't have a whole lot of the family, but we all tried to get along to be polite, to be a polite, loving, and caring family. After I graduated from high school, I wondered what I was going to do with my life. My dad was a Christian. My mom was from a Christian family. At the age of 18, I decided to work for the company for a year. Later, I went to a Christian college. At 22, I met Larry, and we ended up getting married later the same year. Same year. Two years later, we had a son, Mark, who I learned at the age of 17, to be diagnosed with degenerative brain disease. God prepared me for a number of years to deal with her son's disease. Through the experiences I had worked in elementary school for multi-handicapped children, I also taught second grade in an elementary school in the inner city. At 16, our son had already graduated from high school. He had been working in a fast food restaurant and was volunteering in the hospital. Our lives seemed to be going along smoothly until Mark reported us that he was having a continued clicking sensation in his head. I remember him saying to me one day, Mom, please pray that I'll get back to my own self. I prayed, but I didn't know what God was going to do that was going to allow our family to go through. I remember one day I came home in April. I had been teaching, and Larry had gotten home from work. Well, when we reacted to home, Mark disappeared. He had no idea where he had gone to. One, two, and three days went by until he was found. He was totally incoherent. We had him taken to the hospital. We learned that just as parents suffer from Parkinson's disease because of reduction in the dopamine. Mark was suffering from reduction of dopamine his disease. It was causing him to be unable to cognitively process information. We realized how serious Mark's condition really was and one of the top neurologists in Kansas City had accomplished with us and recommended two things. First, he said we must realize the progress of the Mark's condition is not a good one. He said that Mark would progressively get worse and worse until he would have to be in the institution. Second, he said because this disease is genetic, I would recommend that you have not any more children. One day, that was for Larry and me, sometimes it's not easy to believe the Word of God. I wondered why God had allowed this to happen to our son. The verse in Romans 8:28, which says, We know that all things work together for good for them that love God to them. Or the call that told you through his purpose was one verse that's hard to leave during this difficult time in our lives. I remember telling Mark one day that God must have a special purpose for his life and only because of everything he had gone through because he was still alive. Larry and I were facing the battle on two fronts. Concern over our son and now the challenge of Larry's problem in the state of Missouri. Larry started as a social worker. He already had prior experience working with the state of Kansas. The very day he started with the state of Missouri was our son's 18th birthday. Unfortunately, Mark was still in the hospital. Mark was very much wanted to come home. Doctors wanted to make sure he was stabilized on his medication. It was during this trial and error time of medication for Mark that things got messed up. The head doctor had subscribed the medication for Mark, and Mark's body started rejecting it. The medication had such an adverse effect on Mark that his heart rate skyrocketed. It got so high they had to pump it out of his system. It was devastating to see our son lie there with tubes attached to his body and shaking all over. I wonder if we would lose him before this was all over, but God still kept him alive. Larry started working as a social worker for Missouri in 1994. I was working in activities in a nursing facility. Larry and I would go to the hospital every day to visit our son. This is a real drain on both of us to work all day and then see our son in his condition at night. Larry came home and said that there was a chance for him to earn his master's degree in social work. He went on to explain that the state of Missouri would be sponsoring him in the program. He had moved from a social worker 
I and to his social worker who he had been receiving good evaluation that I, of course, was thrilled when he got recommendation of the master's program for both his supervisors. I saw this as a way that Larry could help us financially and feel fulfilled and helping others at the same time. I didn't realize at the time this was not God's will, but God had something totally different in mind. It was in April of 1995 that Larry came home with some information that was quite shocking to me. He said that a co-worker had come to him asking about how Larry felt about white and homosexuals, foster parents. Later, she showed him a brochure that was being out to foster children. He was shocked himself when he saw the pornographic material of the homosexuals wanted to hand out to foster children. Larry was pretty upset about the brochure. He decided to take the brochure to our pastor. The pastor couldn't believe it and took it to his state representative. I might mention that Larry also had a friend who was familiar with lobbying in the state legislature. He decided to go to our state capital in Jerusalem, in Jefferson City, to show the state legislature what was really going on and Kansas State Director of Social Services just happened to be at the state capital state at the same time that Larry was there. Larry showed the information director of social services, Spirit very rude to Larry conveyed to him that this meant nothing to him. However, God was in the situation, the case kept right on moving along. One Sunday morning at church, Larry decided to bring the pastor up to date on the case. The pastor couldn't believe the case was continuing. The pastor told his wife the case was still not over. His wife became very upset and started crying. She was concerned over the backlash for children since her husband had come to Larry's defense and called the state representative. As the state kept progress, progressing, our pastor informed the church to be moving out of Kansas City because he felt that God had called him to pastor another church. Sad to see him go. During this time, Larry had to go through his depositions. Reading to our son, Mark, who was now at home. I remember reading to Mark of him. His wife came up to the Red Sea and her backs were against Pharaoh and his army. God had made a way for them. I had written to different Christians, telling them about the case and asking them to pray for us. Larry called me on a Thursday when he was in federal court and was very discouraged. He said that he thought we were going to lose the case. I tried to encourage him by reminding him that God was in control of every situation. In 1999, we moved to the country. We thought it would be good for Mark's health. Mark seemed to be doing some better since we had found the medication he was responding to. I recall when Larry had just begun working with the state of Missouri that he had been invited to church by one of the trainers. He went to her church, it was a very liberal church, very later invited her to our church, and she stated that she couldn't come to our church because it didn't fit into the right category. He later found out that she had kicked her husband out of the home and now living with another woman. I felt so very sad about the situation. I did I did think about the time and the position. This was when the state of Missouri had gotten all the information for Larry's case. Being on the 700 Club, can't help but think about God having his own timing. I think about Queen Esther and God using Moses at 80 years old. We can know the mind of God. I think about the story of Joseph in the Old Testament and how God allowed Joseph to go through certain situations how man meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. This taught me that God is working out his purpose to do his own good pleasure. What? After looking back on my life, the different experiences that I have had, the different people I have met, the whole Larry case, Larry's case for our son Mark, I have found God to be a source of strength. By depending upon him and his word and not myself, I have found to be faithful. Next time we'll be reading chapter 17 of my extracurricular activities for my own number, but many first previous hopefully next time. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. The next chapter is called my Extracurricular Activities, Chapter 17, and then Chapter 18 is My Thoughts and Beliefs After 20 Years. That's the beginning of the second uh, portion of the book.
Hope you all have a good day. Bye for now.